the PS5 didn't turn up at E3 2018, as we suspected. Despite many believing Sony may whip out their next-generation console due to news that the company was preparing for the PS5's end-of-life process, that hasn't been the case. In fact, it's more than likely we won't actually see or hear much around the PS5 until next E3 although a Paris Games Week tease is still possibly on the cards. Rumors around a PS5 announcement began circulating after Sci CEO John Cadera made comment that the PS4 was entering the end of its life back in late May. Cadera also kind of hinted that the PS5 would be released in 2021, contradicting the analyst reports previously suggesting that the PS5 would be released in late 2019 or 2020. Talking to analysts and investors at Sony's Investor Relations Day, where he made his comments to Mochizuki, he explained that the period until March 2021 would be when PlayStation grows further, as suspected, this statement meant that a 2018 reveal for the PS5 was just that little bit too soon. If Sony wants to follow a similar route to Microsoft's announcement of the Xbox One X using E3 simply as a platform to confirm that a new console definitely is coming, 2019 would be the absolute earliest this would happen. Sony could also shift a huge console announcement to Paris Games Week, a forum that Sony has invested in heavily over the last few years, or opt to announce in 2020 with a one-year window before release. One thing is clear, though. With Sony's E3 2018 press conference lacking anything overly new, the company is definitely holding back some big hitters to land on the PS5. Whenever that may be. 397 pounds and 92 pence by now PS5, everything you need to know about the PlayStation 5 PS5 release date. When can you expect the PlayStation 5, as Sony hasn't confirmed anything beyond the PlayStation 5 being in development, and a promise that it'll probably be some time before it comes to market, your guess is as good as mine. It's unlikely to arrive before 2019 and is most likely to arrive for holiday season 2020. The PS4 is also enjoying abundant sales. There have now been over 50 million PS4 units sold around the world since launch and the new PS4 Pro is enjoying healthy sales despite its limited audience. To cannibalize sales by releasing a new console soon would be a foolish move and likely piss off the PlayStation fan Sony won back after the mess that was the PS3, PS5, is Sony working on a PlayStation 5, Sony's PS5 is so far away that it's not even a blip on most people's radar. However, for those of you eager to know what's going on with the PlayStation 5, it appears there are some murmurings on the horizon. Interest around Sony's next PlayStation console has been bubbling since the launch of the PS4 but, with the subsequent announcement and release of the PS4 Pro, interest around the PlayStation 5 has seemingly dropped off. That hasn't stopped analysts and experts trying to work out when Sony will pull the trigger on a fifth-generation PlayStation though. Macquarie Capital Securities analyst Damien Thong predicts Sony will launch the PS5 in 2018, speaking to the Wall Street Journal he sees Sony releasing the new device in the second half of the year. Thong was correct with both the PS4 Slim and PS4 Pro announcements, but it's worth noting that he didn't predict the arrival of the original PS4. A PS5 wouldn't simply be a hardware revision like the previous consoles, where contacts at manufacturing plants would be able to leak information well before release. If a PlayStation 5 was in the works, it'd still be very much in the technical stages now. PS5's biggest competition we do know that a PS5 is coming, that much has been confirmed by Sony's Sean Layden in an interview with German site Golem.de. But Layden didn't put a date on it beyond saying that the PlayStation 5 is coming, but it'll probably be some time before it's released. Serial analyst Michael Pachter of Wedbush Securities, infamous for his generally incorrect predictions, believes that Sony won't release a PlayStation 5 console until 2019. My expectation is that it's not coming out in 2018, he said in an interview with Gaming Bolt. It's a 2019 or 2020 release, but probably 2019. 
Sony is probably timing it better because they are going to bring out a 4K-capable device when the 4K TV market reaches 50% in the USA and 35% in the rest of the world. Personally, I can't see either case being true. I may be no analyst, but I've been paying attention to the console market for years. Murmurings generally do indicate things happening in the background, but for Sony to release a new device so soon after the PS4 Pro is somewhat suspect. The original PS4 launched in 2013, three years later the PS4 Pro arrives. 2019 would be the absolute earliest for a new generation of hardware to arrive, but both Microsoft and Sony have continually said they see this generation as the longest one yet. Both the PS3 and Xbox 360 sat in the market, with no hardware revisions, for six to seven years before being replaced. This would mean a 2019 release would come at just the right time, and it's more likely a 2020 launch date would fit the cycle Sony wants to promote for this generation. 221 pounds and 84 pence spa now another issue is around 4K technologies. Not enough consumers have adopted 4K for Sony to seriously consider it. Microsoft may be going in all guns blazing with the overpowerful Xbox One X, but the PS4 Pro focuses on enhanced 1080p gameplay with 4K capabilities. A PS5 would not only focus on making 4K the norm, but it'd also have to be ready for what comes next, and Gran Turismo developer Polyphony Digital has claimed its next Gran Turismo game for PS5 is 8K ready, suggesting Sony's new machine will be capable of outputting as such impossibly high resolutions. Those aren't 2018 components. PS5 specs, what will the PlayStation 5 be capable of? With hovers in the PS5, Sony's new machine will have to be a beast. Not only is it going to beat the PS4 Pro, it'll also have to usurp Microsoft's incredible Xbox One X as the most powerful console ever created. This isn't simply showboating, to become a next-generation console, Sony really has to up the ante with the PlayStation 5, it's likely Sony will want to ensure parity with the PS4 and PS4 Pro catalog of games, but it'll also need to provide more power than ever before. This means it could well move away from an AMD-based processor and adopt NVIDIA's technology, which the Nintendo Switch has proven works as a console chip replacement. The downside to such a move is the lack of compatibility with the AMD-based PS4 and PS4 Pro. To best the Xbox One X's 6 teraflop capabilities, Sony will need to pack in more power than an 8-core 2.3 GHz CPU, 12 GB GDDR5 RAM, and a GPU with more than 40 compute units at 1172 MHz. The Xbox One X is already more than twice, if not three times as powerful as the PS4 or PS5 has to be even better than that. If this is the bar set by Microsoft in 2017, it's unlikely Sony could come close to this at an affordable price before 2019. One clue towards just how powerful the PS5 could be coming from Polyphony Digital Head and Gran Turismo creator Kazunori Yamauchi. Speaking to Finder, he claims that GT Sport is over spec to support 8K textures so it'll run on the PlayStation 5 if such an eventuality comes to pass. 221 pounds and 84 pence by an LPS 5 price, how much will the PlayStation 5 cost? Now we enter into the realm of pure speculation. Trying to pick apart just how much Sony might charge for a console is a tricky one as the Japanese company has a history of doing whatever it pleases. Going by the smart pricing of the PS4 and PS4 Pro at £350 on launch, I'd like to say Sony should stick to the same model with the PlayStation 5. However, with Microsoft's Xbox One X coming into the market at an eye-watering £450, Sony may look to see just how successful Microsoft's latest launch is before revising its pricing structure. If Sony plans to release the PlayStation 5 before Microsoft follows up the One X with a new console, then we could well see Sony slotting its next-generation console at the top of its PlayStation family tree as an ultra-premium device with a price point to match.
PS5 games, what games can we expect alongside the PlayStation 5? Who knows what the state of Sony's game library will come the arrival of the PS5, but expect all the heavy hitters from Sony's catalog to make their way to the PlayStation 5 video. A Gran Turismo Sport, release date trailer, PS4 imagine this but in 8K, oop this means there's probably going to be a big budget Naughty Dog game, hopefully not the fifth Uncharted game or a fourth The Last of Us. Perhaps we'll be waiting years for a spiritual sequel to The Last Guardian from the likes of Fumito Ueda, or maybe Sony will surprise us with an actual, on-time release of a new Gran Turismo game. It's unlikely Killzone is coming back anytime soon after Killzone, Shadow, Fall had a lukewarm reception, but a Horizon, Zero Dawn sequel would be most welcome. Regardless of what happens, it's likely Sony will have its big guns ready for PlayStation 5's launch window, and will surely plan to bolster its catalog with plenty of PlayStation VR titles too. PS5 and PlayStation VR, will PlayStation VR work with the PlayStation 5? 397 pounds and 92 pence by now despite the VR naysayers, PlayStation VR has outstripped all of Sony's expectations for the hardware. Sony's still playing catch-up on producing hardware, to meet demand, and its games library is steadily growing at the same time. For Sony to ditch PlayStation VR for the PS5 would be a completely foolish move. Chances are, though, Sony will replace PlayStation VR with a new piece of hardware come the launch of the PS5. I imagine that, out of not wishing to alienate its users, the original PlayStation VR will be compatible with the PS5 out of the box, but you can opt for a new, more powerful PlayStation 5 exclusive VR headset too. Sony will not remove VR functionality with the PS5 going backwards on such a move when the PS4 had enough power to manage it would be utterly foolish. Microsoft hasn't mentioned the Xbox One X's VR capabilities since its unveiling as Project Scorpio, but if Microsoft's console can handle VR, so will Sony's latest and greatest. PS5, will the PS5 be a handheld hybrid like the Nintendo Switch? It looks like Sony could be looking to Nintendo for inspiration on what, exactly, the PS5 will actually be. Inspired by Nintendo's stratospheric success with the Nintendo Switch, which is now the fastest-selling console in US history, Sony is paying attention to what Nintendo is doing. Speaking with the English version of Japan's Nikkei paper, Sony's head of corporate planning Kazuhiko Takeda revealed the company can't ignore the Nintendo Switch. Sony is definitely in a strong position at the moment, with the PS4 and PS4 Pro sitting at the top of the pile for consoles and the rest of Sony's business seemingly going well. But to keep that growth going, it needs to look for new avenues and the success of the Switch shows that people definitely want high-quality portable play. So what does this mean for the PS5? At the moment, not an awful lot. I can't see Sony venturing back into the handheld market after both its PSP and PS Vita failed to gain much traction outside of Japan. Interestingly, though, in the same interview Takeda explained that Sony plans to get more customers paying continuously content, offering up paid subscription services as an avenue to explore further. This statement could point to a future where the PS5 is primarily supplied with content via Sony's PlayStay on Now service subscriptions, rather than simply giving players costly games with one-time purchases. PS5, have studios already started work on games for the PS5? Word on a PS5 release date is likely still out of reach, but with new information alluded to by game studios at this year's GDC, development for the next generation console may already be underway. Earlier this month, industry insider, Marcus Sellers, posted that PS5 dev kits had been sent out to third-party game studios at the start of 2018. Those details were corroborated to us by a number of developers at GDC 2018, so we're pretty certain that studios now have their hands on a PS5 prototype. The more exciting news alluded to at GDC, however, is that game studios may already be working on titles for the next generation of game development. One of these studios being Square Enix, who today announced that it has launched a brand new game studio, named Luminous Productions. 
as part of a year roundup with 4Gamer, via Silicon Era, Square Enix's Hajime Tabata, who is helming the studio, said that his team will earnestly begin development in anticipation of the next generation, then there's Epic Games, who unveiled the GDC new capture technology to render the most lifelike characters we've ever seen. Kim Library, Epic CTO, told GamesIndustry.biz that we'll see hardware that can support these kinds of capabilities pretty shortly, that allusion to hardware support pretty shortly, in combination with Tabata's own comments, sounds like many studios are gearing up to ready games for the next generation of tech on the PS5, from what we can tell, it's looking like Sony wants to release a next generation console before Microsoft makes its move. Many are expecting to hear word of the PS5 this year, with it potentially being unveiled in late 2019 or early 2020. Do take this all with a pinch of salt, as none of it has been confirmed by game studios or Sony itself. We're just listening to whispers through the grapevine, but they are indeed promising.